It's all things Clemson on tonight's tailgate. Grab a drink and join us. Thanks for joining us here. It's uh, Luke with the tailgate. As always, I'm joined with uh, Dennis and Michael. Hello, hello. And then we have a special guest with us today, uh, Jason Priester from AllClemsonTigers.com. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Yeah, my pleasure, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, for sure. Well, well tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about your uh, Clemson journey. And what brought you to what you're doing? Hey, man, it was kind of a fluke thing, to be quite honest. You know, um, I, I, I grew up a Clemson fan. Um always have been my whole life and like die hard for years and i always kind of had a passion for you know i was the guy that read the box score in the newspaper every morning probably had it memorized man you know for for not just clemson but pro teams college teams everything i mean every morning first thing i did so i kind of just had a knack for it and you know i i the older I got, I had multiple te- people tell me I was in the wrong profession. You know, you, you should be covering sports for a living and stuff. And there, there was a website out there one day looking for somebody to help them cover Clemson baseball. So I answered it, and, you know, sure enough, I they wanted me to write something up. I wrote it up. It was on the website the next day. And a year later, I was on the beat. Very nice, cool. Nice. Kind of a fluke deal, man, but <laughs> – you know, I've been doing. I, I, I've been on the beat since the start of the 2020 season, and I hope to remain there for a good while longer. Oh yeah, yeah. They find they tend they tend to find the good ones, right? So uh, it was no no no. I can't talk today. You can't talk no. today. Man. It's, yeah, it's really strange. This is pretty pretty much you know, what happens all the time. Luckily, just, yeah. we're not live, so uh, yeah. we can edit this out. But yeah, no, that's that's <laughs> awesome. That's uh, they find the good ones. That's for sure. Well, yeah. obviously, you know, Dabo's still with Clemson. Um, he hasn't made a whole lot of coaching changes, has he? You know, um, not a ton. You know, during that playoff run, Clemson was fortunate. They didn't have much – they didn't have any turnover on the staff, mm-hmm. to be honest. You know, especially at the coordinator positions, you had um, Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott. Jeff Scott finally left after the the, the last uh, – you know, after the, 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 the 2018 season – um, the last national title, and Tony Elliott kind of took it over by himself. Then he stayed for a couple more years, and then Brent Venables didn't leave until a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Since then, there's a bit, a little bit more turnover on the staff. You know, Dabo replaced Tony Elliott with Brandon Streeter. That experiment lasted a year. Okay. And, and he probably, probably caught a little bit more flack than he earned. Clemson's offense improved dramatically in 2020, the year or 2021, the only year he. He was the coordinator, and Dabo still felt like he needed to make a change because I think the offense had kind of gotten stale and kind of outdated, and need a little bit of needed a little bit of a reboot and revamp. And I just don't think Streeter was the guy to do that. Go out, bring in Garrett Riley, and on the defensive side, he kind of went the unconventional route. You know, he hires this guy Wes Goodwin. Nobody's really ever heard of him. Venable's right hand man all the, for a lot of those years, and. So far, so good with that one. You know, yeah. uh, a lot of people questioned it at first, and the defense fell off a little bit in his first year. It was still decent. I mean, it wasn't Venables. Like, don't get me wrong. Sure. It wasn't terrible either. And then last year it was kind of more – it resembled more of what you saw under Venables, man. They were really good on the defensive side of the ball again last year. So, he, you know, once he got his feet settled under him, under him and got a little more comfortable, we, you, you started to see the results on that side of the ball that you had become accustomed to seeing mm-hmm. during those playoff years. Fair enough. Uh, with with uh, Dabo, how, what, what are your thoughts on his approach to the portal and NIL and all that stuff as of right now? You know, Dabo's going to stick to his guns, yeah. man. Some fans, <laughs> some fans are going to like it, some fans are not. Um, you know, a lot of stuff's been made about – Dabo and NIL and and a lot of what he says gets kind of twisted. Sure. The Dabo's never really come out and said he was against NIL mm-hmm. the way it's intended to be, you know. I don't think he's a big fan of the pay for play for play. Make no mistake. He's not a big fan of that. He wants he wants the emphasis to be on education and getting guys graduated. And if you look at Clemson's graduation rate, it's the highest in the country. Yeah. The the last time they put the numbers out, 
Um, so he, he places a big emphasis on that. You know, a lot of that's got to do with how he came through school. He was a walk on, I think he earned a scholarship there at Alabama and, you know, just, just his journey. So he's kind of built his football program at Clemson, you know, based on his own journey there at Alabama. Let's put it that way. But there, he's he's never going to go out and pay, you know. Say he's never going to get into this pay for play stuff that's going on right now. He he wants guys that want to be at Clemson. There there are plenty of NIL opportunities for guys once they get to school. But he's never going to promise a guy, hey, I give you this much just for signing, or I give you that much just for signing, or I guarantee you this job just for signing. He's never going to do it. Yeah, it's just not in his DNA. It's not who he is. You're going to have to – if you're going to come to Clemson, you're going to have to earn it. Um, and that's kind of the way they've been doing it. The recruiting's kind of started to pick back up a little bit over the past couple of years. Um, he, he's, he's bound and determined to do it his way, and we'll see if he can, you know, build them back up because there's no there's no denying they've taken a step back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think with uh, with with Saban kind of leaving, and I think he the same kind of mentality uh, that, that – that he has is kind of that I'm not going to do it this way. So it'll be interesting to see how, how he does. Yeah. And I didn't really mention the portal, but his portal philosophy is kind of different too. You know, Mm -hmm. he's not going to, he's not going to pay for play there really, you know, um, or he's, let's just put it this way. He's not going to get into bidding wars for guys before, you know, he, he, they tried to bring in a couple of offensive linemen via the portal after last season, um, missed on, you know, all, I think there were three of them, if I'm remembering right, that they were really serious about. Um, got two of them on campus and, and just missed on all three for different reasons, for various reasons. Um, one, I remember one ended up at Georgia Tech. One ended up committing to one school, decommitting, and then ended up somewhere else. So, um, you know, if you really follow Clemson recruiting closely, man, they're very slow to offer. Mm-hmm. They, like, for example, 2026 guys, they won't even start offering them till June. Okay. Um, they 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 hand out far fewer offers than most every other Power Five program in the country. Um, they haven't even handed out close to a hundred for 2025. Mm-hmm. They're they, they're very methodical in the way they go about offering kids and recruiting kids. And he's tried to apply that same philosophy to the portal. And in the portal, it's kind of like speed dating, man. You've got to be a little <laughs> bit faster. And it just hasn't worked out. Not not that I think any of those three guys are going to come in that they were targeting were going to come in and start this year. I think maybe one of them might have had the chance to compete for a starting job. I think they lost out on one because they wouldn't guarantee him a starting job, to mm-hmm. be quite honest. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, we'll, we'll see how they – evolve with their portal philosophies and and how they go about recruiting those guys but he's never gonna he's never gonna you really don't think that's gonna like overall i guess kind of hurt clemson though like he's an old school type of coach he has an old school philosophy of like hey you come here to play you play for the culture you play for the tradition but with so many things changing now especially how modern game is kind of with the nil and everything i mean that's one of the reasons why it's said that saban has left and a lot of the new coaches you see like Saban himself is actually, you know, he's in his fifties, so he's he's been around the game long enough to have that old school tradition, as you said, like with Alabama. So he has those roots. But a lot of the newer coaches are like, hey, throwing money. Other, I mean, other teams in the ACC, like Louisville, has been one of the biggest factors on that, and that's in the same conference as Clemson. Like, you don't think that that's gonna, I guess, outpace them sooner or later? It's gonna hurt you with some guys, yeah. absolutely, one hundred percent. Because there's going to be a lot of guys that just, you know, they, they, they're going to take the highest offer. So there's going to yeah. be absolutely, I'm not even going to say some guys, a lot of guys, <laughs> you're probably, you're not even going to chase because you know they're out chasing the money. So, yeah, it, it does make it much more difficult. It makes the evaluation process that much harder. Um, whether or not he can build it back doing it his way, I think that's to be determined. Um, yeah, I, I just feel there, like there are a lot of things working against him right now. Yeah. Um, seeing how is this the wild, wild west, and he doesn't mm-hmm. want to get into bidding wars and, and those kind of things. But again, you know, he, he's going to do it his way, man. And I think he's kind of earned the right to do it that way. I, um, I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> I just think, <laughs> like, the Clemson um, fan base as a whole, you guys 
or we're so used to winning the past, I guess, or possibly like almost decade, sure. like yeah. roughly give or take, uh, that I feel like a season again that happened this past season in 2023, I don't know if the fan base in general is going to be too happy about that, man. Like <laughs> that's going to ask for his head again. <laughs> I'm, I'm 50, man. So yeah. I, I'm, I am old enough to remember <laughs> long before Dabo got there yeah. and, uh, the mediocrity that program was mired in in the 90s to 2000s <laughs> under Tommy Bowden. I didn't think I'd ever see Clemson competing for national titles ever again in my lifetime. I'm just barely old enough to remember the first one from 1981, <laughs> um, and I never thought I'd see it again. And then after 2016, I didn't think I'd see another one. Then they go out and win another one. But, yeah, some of the younger fans are absolute – they have absolutely gotten spoiled. Mm-hmm. Um they, they think you're supposed to compete for national titles every year. Heck, not even Alabama played for a national title every year. Um, as far as, you know, if Clemson goes eight and four again this year, yeah, you know, there, there's, he's, the pressure's going to keep mounting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. If, if the program doesn't start taking some steps forward back towards national relevancy, yeah, the pressure's going to continue to mount year after year uh, until he does that. But, you know, being around here a little bit and being around this program a little bit, um, it, I don't think it's like hot seat. His job's going to be in question or anything so like that. Do you think um, like having a 12 team like playoff, I guess, is an advantage towards him where he can lose still like, you know, potentially two games and still have a chance of going to the natty? Yeah, I don't know that they do, yeah. man. Um, I, For me personally, I think if you're in the ACC and, and you don't, win the league and you're expecting an at large goes for the big 12 too. You better not lose more than one game. Cause you're probably going to get passed over by a two loss SEC team or a two <laughs> loss big 10 team. I think we've seen that already. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be the big 10 and SEC invitational. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that's kind of my view on that. Um, I kind of, you know, but it, it does to your point. Yeah. It, it would help a little bit. You know, the, the 12 team playoff helps a little bit. You know, maybe if you have two good teams in ACC one year, maybe you can get two in. Um, you know, speaking as a guy that covers this team and is around a lot of the Clemson fans, I can tell you that they're ready to get out of the ACC. They want to yeah. see Clemson in, in, in the SEC or the Big Ten. They're ready to see some movement there. And um, we'll see how that plays out in the future. But yeah, the, the 12 team playoff might help them a little bit, but. You, you better still probably go eleven and one, <laughs> right? You think they'll be like ready though to compete versus like teams in the like Big Ten and Big uh, SEC like on a week in and week out basis though? If they were to hypothetically, do I? You know, I don't. I can't like, read. I don't. I can't. Yeah. I, I don't have a crystal ball. I yeah. can't read the future. But <laughs> those teams in the past, absolutely one hundred percent. I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like what Clips has done on the recruit. I, I think their recruiting took a little bit of a step back. Mm. Um. You know, 2019, and they had a really good class in 2020. Um, the 2019 class was just, was just a big bust all the way around. Um, then they had a good class in 2020. And, and then some of those guys, but, but some of those skill guys that they recruited, particularly a receiver, had just not worked panned out. Yeah. And, and it's killed, you know, what they – any mo- it, it's just kind of – Killed the offense, man. There's a bunch of big time guys they signed out of high school at wide receiver that just, you know, it didn't work out for whatever reason. They injuries derailed their career, or you know, one thing or another. And they've gone on to transfer to other schools, and they still not working out at other schools. So I mean, it's not the school then, <laughs> right? Yeah, sometimes you just miss on guys, and I yeah. think Clemson missed on several big time wide receivers at and for a school that used to be wide receiver you Mm -hmm. um and you see the talent level drop off that significantly at that position and then you add in the fact that the quarterback that was supposed to replace your last generational quarterback he was supposed to be a generational quarterback didn't work out that way Mm -hmm. and um you know again you just missed on some guys i think clemson's been you know a lot of things working against them you know this new modern football stuff that Dabo sweeney's having to navigate um, the portal, NIL, those kind of things, and some recruiting misses. Um, I think the the, the COVID year, yeah. the, the the year long shutdown hurt them in recruiting because of the way they go about the recruiting process and stuff. And I do like what they've done the past couple of years. I like some of the guys they brought in. I do think they, 
I think, you know, you asked me about the coaches earlier, and I didn't even mention that they just hired Matt Luke as offensive mm-hmm. line coach. And that's been one of the biggest issues the past couple of years is that offensive line, and it trickles down to everybody else. I think he finally got the right guy in place there, and they, they've got – it's made a big impact on the recruiting trail already. Um, I expect they're going to be a lot better up front, and they got some skill guys that I think are going to be – Really good this year as freshman Bryant Wesco, TJ Moore. Um, you know, Wesco was a five star guy for forever until the final rankings come out. He gets dinged to four star, TJ Moore gets moved up to five star. Mm-hmm. Kind of ironic there, but you know, two guys that were at one time or another five stars, two of the better receivers in the class. And you put them with guys like Antonio Williams and, and Tyler Brown and, um, some other guys already on the roster. And I think you I think you're gonna start seeing some improvement with Garrett Riley in his second year, A Club in his second year leading leading the offense. Cause I'll be the first to say K Clubman's not as far along as I thought it would be at this point. You know, you watch that kid in high school and you think he's a can't miss prospect. And fans just could not believe Dabo Sweeney and that staff didn't give him much of a chance when he was a freshman, when DJ Uyunglele was struggling so mightily. Yeah. And then you see him last year, and you kind of start to figure out why. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, he's not quite ready, and I'm not sure he was quite ready last year either. I expected he'd be a little further ahead than he was. Um, by all accounts, he's had a dynamite spring so far. Awesome. So have some of those receivers. It's the first time they've had a bunch of those receivers healthy in a long time. You know, they've just had so much bad luck when it comes to injuries on the offensive side of the ball, um, they avoided that during those playoff runs, you know, mm-hmm. and they kind of coming back to bite them. Um, but, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of that, a lot of this, you know, Clemson's defense has kind of held up. You know, defense travels and the defense has held up over the years. It's the offense that kind of fell off again. I think it got stale. I think it got outdated. You do something to address that. I'm not, You know, then your offensive line still struggling. Your skill guys can't stay healthy. Quarterback still doesn't look like he's quite ready. Um, a lot of things going against you, but you know, it, I think this is a big year for that offense. Um, big, big year. It's got to be a lot better than it was last year. Sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, Played. I think they're re- definitely going to need it with yeah. the, how the ACC FL is going to play out. Yeah, Cade Klubnik yeah. definitely was uh, – he showed some flashes last year, but then he also had those, you know, what what are you doing? What's going yeah. through your head right now? <laughs> I uh, call them brain fart moments. Yes. Yeah, that's, that is very, that's very accurate. So you've mentioned some of the receivers that uh, that they've got coming up. Who do you think is going to be the guy this year that's going to take that step and just kind of be, you know, the target the guy? Yeah. Who's going to be the guy? Yeah. You know, I don't know that there's going to be a the guy. They they okay. have, you know, Clemson for so many years they had they had at least one of those alpha dogs in that receiver room. Yeah. They've not had one of those in a while, and they they that that's you know I think that's played a part here too that you just don't have one of those dynamic alpha guys i think you got two guys coming in that are certainly capable of being that don't know that either one will be that as freshmen um i still really like adam randall who's, who's going into his third season he's had some terrible luck with injuries mm-hmm. um i saw him a lot in high school I, i've seen what he's capable of it's not translated to this level yet don't get me wrong but i right. still think he's got it in him um, Antonio Williams will be back this year. Tyler Brown, uh, you know, excuse me, Antonio Williams will be back this year after missing pretty much all of last season. Tyler Brown was a dynamic guy as a freshman, and he played pretty much hurt all of last season. So he should be health, fully healthy by the time the season rolls along. But, you know, if I had to pick just one guy, I, I think I'm a go, I think I'm a roll with one of those freshmen. Give, um, I think they're going to have that big of an impact on this team. Um, Troy Stilato is a guy who finally broke out last year after being hurt for his first two years. He, matter of fact, he's fixing to have uh, some something done on his shoulder to clean up some stuff in there. And he'll miss the rest of the spring that way to have him back by fall camp. But I'm going on one of those freshmen, man, because I think Clemson has not had a true boundary type receiver going three, four years now. Yeah. I mean, and I think Bryant Wesco, who's already here and enrolled and participating in spring pack practice, can be that guy. But I, I think TJ Moore. Okay. I think he's going to have a dynamite freshman season. He doesn't get here till the summer, 
But unlike Wesco, who who by all accounts has looked fantastic throughout the spring, but he's still a little wiry. He needs a little bit more bulk. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much he puts on over the summer. He's already put on a little bit, but he needs more. TJ Moore is going to step on foot, step foot on campus, ready to go. Yeah, I feel like he already has that size, just like ready yeah. to play. And he bring him and Wesco both bring some of that speed that's been sorely missing from this offense. I've <laughs> had that for a while. Yep, Clemson for two consecutive years they've had a freshman who did not enroll early come in and make a beat an, a, a big time impact as a receiver. Two years ago, it was Antonio Williams. Last year, it was Tyler Brown. I'm saying it's T.J. Moore this year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like T.J. Moore. Like yeah, looking yeah, at I his like size, he's six three, already about almost two hundred. So yep. I feel like even as a freshman, I'm like, you don't look like one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's I, amazing be, seeing these kids now coming yeah. out of high school and remembering what I look like coming out of high school. <laughs> Knowing what I look different. like right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I would say I'm also kind of excited though for Clemson a uh, kind of run game. Like I've always actually was a big fan of a uh, Mafa this past season. Mm-hmm. I feel like he had some big runs, some key runs like that. Personally, I also just like saying his name. <laughs> like when it was just the highlights that was going around. It was, I mean, it was, a, it was a, uh, a fun guy to watch when he was playing. <laughs> funny, funny story about Mafa when he got that nickname Mafa yeah. Man on TV <laughs> that day against Florida State year yeah. before last play. Before that. I got ran over on the sideline, man, <laughs> by Jamie Jones. <laughs> Jamie, I think Jamie Jamie Jones or Jamie Johnson from Florida State. Yeah, um, just just totally brutalized me on the sideline one day. <laughs> um, and then the very next play, Moffa breaks off a big run and RG three calls him Moffa, man. But I've I've been extremely high on Phil Moffa since the day I first saw his film when he was still in high school, and. I have been waiting for him to have the opportunity to be the guy, mm-hmm. not be 1A or 1B the way it's been with him and Will Shipley the past couple of years to be the guy and getting the bulk of the carries. We saw what he can do in that role against Notre Dame last year. Sure. Don't think you're going to see a bunch of games where he's getting 36 carries like no, he did that day or whatever it was. But um, you know, so He you, seems like he can hold it down, though, if you need to. Yeah, yeah. you know he's capable of it. Um Really, the only knock on him the first couple of years has been his pass protection, and and it's gotten better gradually mm-hmm. the more he's played, and I think it'll only continue to get better the more time more time he sees on the field. But yeah, I, I think Clemson's run game should be in pretty good hands this year with with Mafa atop the depth chart. Again, it goes back to Matt Luke being hired as the O line coach. There's a lot of good things being said by those running backs about the offensive line and the way it's you know, performing so far early in spring. And then you got, you know, you got some guys in there now to have some home run speed. They they can take it, you know, Stretch take it out. Yeah. yeah, on any given play. Kind of maybe one thing Moffa's lacking. He doesn't have that fifth gear. Mm-hmm. No. Start pulling away from yeah. people in the open field. And you got a guy like Jay Haynes, who was a freshman last year. He redshirted. He, he's got elite level speed. He, he's a smaller guy, more – you know, of a change of pace guy. And then freshman David Ajamame, who's on campus, he enrolled early. He's already there now. He, he runs like a 10.89 in the 100 meters. So he's got elite level speed. So you're yeah. going to have, you know, a couple guys that, that can give you uh, – that can be good change of pace guys. And and then Keith Adams Jr. is the guy behind Moffa right now. He's been in the program a couple years. He, he played high school football out in Utah. His daddy played linebacker at Clemson. Keith okay. Adams. Um, I think he still holds the record for most tackles. He played a little bit in the NFL, very undersized linebacker, but man, Seems one of the be best be. I've ever yeah. seen. And I, I just remember when when Keith came out of high school a couple of years ago and we asked Dabo about him and he just said the guy just scores touchdowns, man. <laughs> I oh, that just stuck my head and we haven't seen a whole lot of him, but he's a he's a back in the mold of Mafa bigger stronger between the tackles guy um but yeah if they can get the blocking up front the running game should be really good nice. yeah so what do you think about uh garrett riley's uh more up-tempo offense i know you guys got to see flourishes of it last year but like obviously you have to have a you have to have a general that's able to run that the quarterback club nick i think can run that because he did it in texas uh when he was you know in high school but like 
you know, do you think that he's going to be going to end up becoming your general, or do you guys think you're going to have to start looking elsewhere after this year? You know, that's a good question. You know, when he got the job, I thought Clemson would be lucky if he was there for three years. Fair enough. Um, you know, and seeing the way last year went, I don't know. Maybe it might be a little bit longer. All four years. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll be a little bit longer, but. I mean, I do think there is a plan in place for somebody to succeed in if that were to happen. But, um, you know, I think Clemson's offense is going to be much improved this year. I mean, it, it, it can't be a whole heck of a lot worse. It, it was pretty <laughs> bad. It was pretty bad at times. And it was hard to watch at times last year. It was just so discombobulated. And you could tell, especially, the, you know, the further we got into the season, the coaches just had no faith in their ability to stretch the field or push the ball down the field. By the time you got into those games against South Carolina and Kentucky, they, they just weren't making any effort to throw the ball down the field. Um, it was just little pop passes, wide receiver screens, little slants, and the running game, and they were relying on that defense. But I, I think you're going to have to – I think you're going to see them start trying to stretch the field a little bit more this year. Again, you got some more speed on the outside – um, Brandon Stool's back as a senior at tight end, six foot seven guy who's who's a matchup nightmare. Um, yeah, but it's seven. an all hands on Klubnik, man. It's, it's it's like you said, you got to have the general to run it. And I think Garrett Riley was really handcuffed in what he could do last year, mm. based on poor offensive line play. You know, um, up and down quarterback play. I just don't think they had a whole lot of faith in that passing game this last year. And that's going to be a big question heading into this season is where that offense is going to be year two under Garrett Riley. Fair enough. Well, last question before we let you go. Uh, what's what's your prediction for uh, this the record for this year, this upcoming year? <laughs> yeah, you start, you start off kind of hard with that Georgia team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're going to find out real <laughs> yeah. quick. <laughs> um, yeah, that I'm, you know, it's going to be a good gauge of where they're at. Um, sure. I'm sure they're going to be double-digit underdogs. Now you go into that thing hoping you don't get run out of the building. But um, it, when I looked at the schedule earlier, I, I, I had them 10 and 2, losing okay. to Georgia and dropping another one somewhere along the way. I don't know who, but um, it's I, I, I saw I see them at 10 and 2, um, and you know depending on where that loss comes from, comes they it, potentially in the ACC title game. I mean, probably Appalachian State, you know, two losses in a row. Right. Okay. <laughs> Appalachian State's the upset. Yeah. You, you cannot overlook Appalachian State. Mm -hmm. um, they, they they put up a little fight against Clemson last time they came to town several years ago. Damn. You see what they do when they play North Carolina. I mean, yeah. if you, you overlook them, man, you'll get beat. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. We, yeah. we we call them the spoiler team here for yeah. a reason. Yeah. So love watching them play. <laughs> yeah. That is a good football program. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It sure is. Well, Jason, again, appreciate you so much for coming on uh, to our our uh, podcast tonight. And you know, we just we uh, where 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 can everyone find you and find your work and stuff like that? Just go ahead and give give yourself some plugs. Yeah, man, I'm on Twitter at JP underscore Priester, and and everything I do is on the website allclemsontigers.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What yeah. you guys have anything else? No, I think we're good. We appreciate your time, Jason. Nah, man. Appreciate you guys having me. Yes, Thanks, sir. man. Thank, Thank you. you.